I also would like to say that my favorite song on Toho 13 is Night Soccer, The Dead Spirits. That's why it's my favorite game. I would also like to say that my favorite shirts in the room right now are these shirts. <laughs> Not because they have any particular characters on them. No, this is <laughs> we will actually, we have uh, three of them we'll be giving away later. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 we have three of them. So, if after whatever, uh, we're going to try to give them away. Or I go with gummy bears. Yeah! And uh, I'm not online as Lunar Spotlight, and I'm the station manager. So, a little bit of those, so I'll try to make this brief. Um, Insoki Radio is a 24 7 Toba internet radio station, and we started in March 2011. We have logged the listeners in more than 140 countries, so that's most of them. <laughs> uh, we take a lot of other stats too, but that's kind of a big one. Uh, we have an average of 45 listeners in general, and we're growing over time, slowly but surely. For bandwidth for the server that streams all the music out to people, we consume more than two terabytes a month. So, like, if you imagine a new or newish hard drive, that's two terabytes. You can fit a lot of video, music, whatever. We go through one of those once a month. So. We have five staff members, uh, us two, we also have our tribe who is the founder, Nano Satellite who is one of our moderators, I know unfortunately he's not here, but, um, and then uh, Sonic Mega or Sean Chiplock, he's actually a voice actor and he's done stuff uh, in California. I think one of the last or latest things he's done was he voiced a character in the English dub of Sword Art Online, so it's kind of cool to have him around. Uh, we also have some Facebook staff, uh, one of them is Smirk, he's got the camera back there next to the other camera. Very nice. Congrats. He's the uh, page manager. And then we have volunteers, 20-something volunteers around the globe. Uh, they're in a lot of places. And uh, obviously, from our perspective anyway, Toho and his music is very obviously a global phenomenon. Seeing how many people in how many different countries there are and how many people have offered to volunteer to help us get the word out. But it all goes back to the origin. <laughs> I'm a little guy in screen chat there is uh, Zoom, of course. Yeah. I wish I could find them. <laughs> Apparently they exist, I just, it's tough to find, but anyway. All elements of the Toho games created by Zoom, we kind of went over that already. Uh, they're all original compositions, he makes everything in the games, all the gameplay, the characters, including the music. They're set to various theme settings, moods that are all relative to the gameplay, so obviously, if you're just starting stage one or whatever, and you're, that's going to be a lot different than any boss theme, or especially as you move further through the game. There's a lot of circles out there, um, and what I mean by that is you can think of circles as kind of a music group, so you can't really compare them to bands. There's some clear differences, like bands will have instrumentalists, uh, vocalists, people who... They're more static. Yeah, so they're basically one group and uh, circles you can have artists who kind of participate in multiple circles um, people who write material for one circle or sing in another or do a combination so it's really kind of cool uh, it's not at all static like no. and then of course uh, with all those circles there are just thousands of albums out there so how many circles did we I think we, I think the number we got up to for at least up to this year was one thousand, almost one thousand registered. It's really tough to say exactly how many there are because there's always new people putting out new music. So thousands of albums, tens of thousands of songs. Um, we know it, it, over forty thousand, um, but there's probably much more than that. Even they're all derived from music from the Toho series of games and they're all made by fans of the games. So, you know, people in the circles are all fans, people who want to put this music it's out. It's never a corporate decision. No, it's, and that's also very important that you know, all these circles aren't signed on by like a, a company or like a, a record label or, or 
what have you, so they're all fan, fan stuff. <clears throat> Some ways it's gained popularity over time. When did we say it was like 2002 or something? Yeah, roughly around 2002. Uh, I remember there being only seven like total music circles at Comic Cat, and then look at today. There's actually a famous graph. If you guys ever go to Know Your Meme, I, I, I know that's not a place to go for information, but they have this graph, and it's just an ex uh, ex uh, exponential uh, slope. It, 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 to them, it goes the other way. That's exponential. Yeah, we'd be going backwards in time. Then. <laughs> just <laughs> the double touches. There we go. Well, not quite. But yeah, you get the idea. So, some ways it's gained popularity. Um, it's shared many places, online especially, like Nico Nico, of course, in Japan, but then also on YouTube. Uh, internet radio stations like ours, or Toho Tuesday is a radio show every Tuesday. They do a two-hour segment on our CBO radio. It's kind of tough to say. Uh, social media, of course, um, but then you can also expand that to people, like, you know, word of mouth, basically, but that's kind of Me. tough if you're not at it convention like this, but if you are, then you probably already know some other people. Uh, there's also a large aftermarket presence through, uh, just for example, through vendors like JList, they have some of the games, some shirts on there. I actually have a couple of them that I got at various conventions. Uh, convention groups or vendors, like I think there's at least one downstairs in the uh, dealer's home yeah. room where you can find some stuff. And I bought five of them. Well, yeah, five albums he did. Um, there, there is, we could go on and interrupt you for a moment. Yeah. If you enter the dealer's room through the main entrance, turn to your right, and there they are. That's Hendaday, and they'll have plenty. I've seen they have They're going several away. boxes of nothing but a range albums. So if you're looking for music, that's the place to go. Just to give you another kind of perspective on how popular it is from the stats that we collect over time. So, for example, listener connection ranking within a seven-day period. If we're to rank countries sort of by the number of connections we get from them, number one, usually the United States. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it will flip-flop with Japan. Not a big surprise, though. Uh, though isn't our number one city overall every time I think, it's Tokyo. I think if you look at it by city, uh, Tokyo has a lot of connections, but collectively the United States has more. So uh, Russia is usually number three, not really sure why, but uh, and then we can kind of go down the list, but usually you have people like, or people, countries like Canada, Germany, Mexico, Peru, the United Kingdom, you know, what have you. They're all going to be a lot more Western. There is Singapore, China, South Korea in there too, but there's a lot of Western countries that kind of sit on top there. So all the Eastern music travels to the West. We hear it. People here want to make it, because obviously we have fans, right? I mean, that's why all of you are here, sort of. There you go, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and then we make more music. West mixes with the East, and we get a lot of interesting music out of it. Very interesting. So, we wouldn't really be a music segment if we didn't have some music. Yeah. Use the dub. Or use the actual yeah. yeah. That's great. And, yeah, the music on this is a little weird, so I'm going to have to back out and go back into the slide to make the music stop. But, <laughs> just as an example, uh, kind of a control group, you could say. This is, um, Beware the Umbrella Left There Forever. It's by DBU Music. Well, let's not do that. And, uh, See you. Already, it's, it sounds pretty distinctly Eastern, especially with that beginning of cheese. You guys okay with the cheese? Okay, I had to do the back of thing, so that was that one. And then to mix it up, you never ever think about putting that in combination with country, but it has happened and it's out there. So and what's funny is I'm from the South and this is better than Taylor Swift. You found it on the country next? what? This is C. Clay's heartwarming and I swear to God, this I listen to this when, like, if I have a bunch of friends who are sitting in the car. <laughs> and it's also good to note that 
this, these two songs here are from the same composition. So it's, uh, it's Kogasa's theme, I think, or Umbrella. And it, yeah. We had to skip in about like 40 sometime before we hit vocals, but anyway, there are vocals in there later. I'm now for something completely different. For different, yeah. If country wasn't different enough for you, let's, uh, let's try a ramp. Oh, this is actually my favorite. I've ever heard. Oh my gosh, I found this and I was sitting in a car and my buddy, I can't remember who, I think it was with Brian, Brian, please stand up. I was with him in the car and I played this and he hates rap and he loves this song. It's got a little bit of an intro thing, so I think they start saying stuff in well, 30 seconds in, so give it just a moment here. You can kind of hear it though. Here we go. Maybe. Yeah, it exists. It's right there. Toho rap. I love it. I'm just trying to say it. Alright. Holy crap. Oh my god. Okay, okay. Sorry. So, and then the last one here. Uh, even more different? How about Irish folk? Does anyone know Irish folk? Once again, another range from You and Owen was heard. It's called Let's, Let's Dance in the Scarlet Devil Mansion from the Circle Floating Cloud. And what's interesting to note about this circle is that they try to use very authentic instruments when they're doing it, so this is about as Irish as you can get. There's a video on YouTube, I think, of them actually. Yeah, they actually, so. they're all in masks, which is funny. Yeah. You can hear it right away. So the melody is key there. Um, so to list some artists from the West, and when I say West, it also you know it's it's yeah. Europe, North America, South America, so basically not Japan. Um, one here we have Seismix, originally from That's Norway. Okay. He is actually a really cool dude. I've had an interview with him, and, and I've done, I've had his entire collection, and his music is very unique for just, he has this very unique sound. That's just, uh, <laughs> That's the only word I can describe it, just, every time you hear, I'm calling, it can be a word. <laughs> U-H-H-H-H-H-H, I spelled it out. Webster's, put it in the Kickstart that. So he's an arranger. He, he does. He arranges the songs. It's usually electronic dubstep. I think that's how he. I think that's what it is. It's. I, he does a lot of house too. I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe you might know. Um, he started independently, but he also is beginning to work with some other circles and businesses like on the Records. And actually, if you guys play Osu, uh, they had a contest with the song Tear Rain from, their, from that album. And I would highly recommend you picking up that number one uh, Thank you. beat map. We also have, uh, this is a circle, we have music from Germany, someone, or a group that I discovered a couple of months ago, I think. Um, they do, again, kind of mostly electronic music, but they also branch out into other genres. They have um, several albums out, which I think they have, is it a SoundCloud? I think it's a SoundCloud. Yeah, they have a SoundCloud and a Bandcamp. Yeah, Seismix has a Bandcamp And that's something too. you need to note. Um, so a lot of, uh, because of the way that album releases work in Japan, uh, in the West, as you know, it's very hard to get uh, your music put on CD, so a lot of Western artists actually go to SoundCloud and Bandcamp because it's just easier and you don't have to have any copyright issues. 
Whereas when you go, uh, go to Japan, that's where you have to, you can go to Comic Con and get an actual CD. Uh, we've also got the artist Renko. Uh, usually, kind of part of Orange Jam. They're from the U.S. Uh, they're a vocal artist. They're a lyricist, which means they write some of the words in the songs. They also work with other circles such as East New Sound, Felt, Illusion Sonic, and I think it's worth noting that East New Sound is general, generally, like generally Eastern, Eastern. right? But yet we have someone from the U.S. kind of collaborating with them. It's kind of similar to what Silence is doing with Amatrice uh, Records. Uh, we also have Tim Vegas from the U.S. as well. Uh, Please, an arranger. Oh, man. If you heard any of the series of uh, Togo Hero Beat albums, it's literally volume one, two, six, whatever they're up to now. Um, Infinity. I think he's a fan of A1. Oh, A1 and a lot of stuff with those albums. I noticed there was one Euro Beat fan in the room, and I knew exactly who it was going to be. <laughs> okay, so we have a <laughs> And uh, we also have an artist from Boston. Boston. Uh, where is Freezax? Is he here? Stand up. He's mentioned already. Yeah. He's mentioned already. I, 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 he's, got, he's got a place down here in the artist alley, and literally his music is amazing. I heard it for the first time last night, and as a music reviewer, that was gorgeous. <laughs> and what's really easy, to, what's really nice to know is all of his album art, the backgrounds are actual places in Boston you can go to. The Green Line, the North Station, all of that. So I would highly check it out. Pick up an album, you get a, you get a poster. I like that idea. That's wonderful. Alright, so with him, there's, there's a couple other artists we know of too that are kind of getting it out there, starting up their own music. And, and, things. and um, I would like to have like a quote from Sesmix when I interviewed him. I asked him, uh, "What do you feel? Uh, what do you want to say to people interested in getting into doing Toho music? And uh, like, what do you feel like uh, they should know?" He said, "Just do it." I mean, there's literally nothing to it. I mean, look at him. He's he works at a movie theater. He's younger than me, and he's making money at a movie theater, okay? And he's making this music, and it is gorgeous. He just recently re uh, released a uh, Nanto album, too. Obviously, he really likes Size Mix. So, there's new artists making new music every year. They're from everywhere, not just from here or Japan. They're Norway, uh, Germany, that's uh, Dominican from Germany, Republic. Dominican Republic, so just a lot of places. And we look forward to what they all have to bring to the table, to the Togo music scene, as it were. And that's about it for our segment. So from DMJ654 and Lunar Spotlight here, thanks for listening. It's the stream. <laughs>